Hey everyone, so you clicked on this video because you want to know how to make a third-person camera in Roblox uh, your own way rather than using someone else's code. So the default camera is shown here. Um, nothing necessarily wrong with it, but it can be a little bit more interactive if we have uh, kind of the over, over the shoulder like uh, some other AAA games out there do. It really adds to the experience even though it's only a small part. So let's jump right to it. So a really important part to scripting and sort of programming in general is keeping everything organized. In Roblox, there's not proper object orientation in coding. You can kind of replicate it with some uh, meta tables and whatnot, but uh, it can get a little messy even then. So we're gonna kind of separate our logic with a local script here. And you can see I have uh, some other code going on here, but in this case, I'm working on a uh, existing game, a demo of some combat. And I decided why not make a video on making a over-the-shoulder third-person camera, since I've got to do it anyways. Go ahead and uh, throw a local script into the starter character scripts. It doesn't really matter uh, what you name it, but in my case I'm going to keep the nomenclature pretty much going with whatever else I have there. We're just going to call it the camera mechanics. And you basically need to hijack the camera from uh, Roblox's scripts. And to do that, there's uh, an enum type we can set to make the camera scriptable, which for the most part gets Roblox's own mechanics out of the way. And we want to uh, make sure the camera follows us every frame. Uh, some people might do something like this and do the uh, mess around with the camera, but uh, you'll see it'll be it'll be choppy if you do that. So. This basically allows us to, every uh, time the run service uh, renders a frame on that step, we, uh, we're, we're running this code. Usually it's about 60 frames per second, but it's always different. And if you really wanted to know, there's uh, the event render step returns a delta that it took to render the frame. So our camera is going to want to follow the root part. The reason for this is because if we follow the torso, um, during the running animation, the camera will kind of bob around. If that's something you want, uh, you might want to take a look at trying to set it that way. Uh, in fact, let's go ahead and um, do that just to see what it looks like. Since I'm using uh, an R, uh, R15 rig, it has an upper and lower torso. We don't want to wait for child uh, in every render frame. We definitely don't want to uh, redefine the variable every time render steps. So uh, when you're programming, you don't have to write out your entire code right away. Uh, it'll make you, it might even stress you out a little bit to have to think about all the possibilities. So we want to just make it work uh, simply at first. So this would basically set the uh, camera's C-frame to the torso C-frame, which would put us right inside of the character, which is not exactly something we want. So if you know anything about the uh, C-frame and the matrix in it, uh, in Roblox, if we use a negative number here, that goes in front of the character on the Z-axis. We're going to use a positive number to go behind it. We also need to set the camera's uh, camera type to be scriptable. So this is pretty short. And let's go ahead and see what happens uh, when we run this in the game. Uh, <laughs> it's a little disorienting. Uh, like I said, it probably would be if you attach it to the torso. It's neat looking in a way, but that's not what we want. Let's uh, go ahead and attach it to the root part, which does not move during animations. So it's a lot more stable. Um, it's not over the shoulder, but it's a good start, and that's kind of what you want when you do when you run these scripts. Is you want a uh, you want a starting place. And so, 
you can see that we can probably make it over the shuttle already by uh, offsetting the x-axis to the left or right. So if we go to the right a little bit, let's go, uh, let's also do 10 here and move it up a little bit because uh, over the shoulder cam is usually above the head slightly. So let's do 7.5 on the y-axis. See what we get. Um, we're definitely over the shoulder, probably a little too far over the shoulder. And uh, we also kind of want to point it in front of where the character is looking. So let's get the position right first. Um, let's move it only five here and five here. Maybe one uh, down again, but uh, we can kind of just assume that that'll be just okay. So we have the basic position of where we want it to be, but we also want the camera to look at sort of where the character is facing as well. So we need to get the position that's so far in front of the character for the camera to look at. So we're going to call this look at position. And we're going to rename this variable to be consistent with what it is. We want the character to look at something that's, let's say, 20 studs in front of it. Again, negative number for in front on the z-axis. So we have our look at position. Um, let's make a variable for the position of the camera where it is on that top kind of upper right area. It's important to make sure your variables are uh, named in a way that makes you understand them. So this is a C-frame value. We want to turn this into a position a uh, vector three, three numbers. And now we want the C-frame to be at that camera start position while looking at that. When you provide C-frame, uh, the new constructor, with two positions, it positions it here while looking at this position. I think nowadays there's a uh, C-frame look at, which uh, does the same thing. Let's go ahead and use that. And let's see what we get. Oh, we've got an error here. Gave it a C-frame on its uh, second argument. Right. So we have a little bit of a problem here. Uh, when the character is running, they're also turning, which if we have our camera facing something in front of it, the uh, character is turning with the camera. So that's not exactly what we want here. We're getting somewhere though. We've got an over the shoulder, oh, excuse me, over the shoulder camera, but uh, it's not complete just yet. So our issue here is actually that humanoids, we're gonna just use the variable human, um, they have, an auto rotate property and so when the camera rotates uh, they also rotate as well all right so we see that we can run forward now and our character no longer uh, rotates due to the fact that we're looking somewhere and that might be off center with a camera facing uh, at an angle. So we basically created our over-the-shoulder camera now, but we have no more way to rotate the camera. There are two ways you can approach this, and one of them is to lock the mouse at the center of the screen, which is the method I'm going to show in this video. But you could also, when they move left and right, which is called strafing at this point, you could have the camera rotate instead while the character would face that. I'm not going to show that in this video because I think it's uh, it's not as fluid. So we're going to lock the mouse to the center of the screen and when the user moves their mouse, the camera is going to move with it. For that, we're going to need the user input service. First, um, just going to make sure everything's working, that the mouse is in fact locked to the center. Okay. You may have to Alt-Tab 
to get it unlocked while you're testing in the game. Later on, what we'll do is we'll implement a quick variable. Uh, in fact, let's do that right now to unlock the mouse while pressing control. So this will basically toggle it each time we press it, um, and we'll set it back to default behavior, which should unlock it when we press control. So we see it's locked, uh, looks like input type, So we press control and it unlocks. This is just for the sake of stopping the game or having control of your mouse again easier. You might be seeing this one here and this is a different one I created for the game. Um, it's a little bit more complex over here in the uh, Explorer than the current one. But this should be able to start you off with something. What we're going to be doing here is we're going to be listening for when the mouse is locked. It'll have a uh, it'll have a delta when it moves sent to uh, the input change in an input object. The delta will kind of tell us on uh, which axis the mouse moved and by how much, and that's how much we should basically be rotating the camera. Let's go ahead and check uh, our value here and see what kind of delta we get uh, upon the movement of the mouse. We'll see it in the output window there. Um, what we're looking for is which axis is changing. We should be seeing the, uh, the x-axis. It'll tell us which direction it moves in. So I'm moving my la uh, mouse left and right, but sometimes uh, it moves up and down inadvertently. So we might see a little thing on the y-axis there. But mostly we want to focus on the x-axis. So we move left, it's negative. We move right, it's positive. And because the camera is actually controlled by the root part's location, we're actually going to rotate the, uh, the root part. And to avoid uh, latency, we're probably going to want to use a, uh, a body gyro. Let's go ahead and do the start a character I have here. And I've already placed one, or no, I should place one. So I have this body gyro here. And I'll bring my properties tab over to this window. We're only focused about the uh, basically the rotation like this, which would be on the y-axis. So imagine the y-axis pole coming down and you're rotating around that. So we don't want the x and z-axis here. Let's see how these numbers work. We're going to make another variable for the body gyro. Again, like I said, we're going to be using the y-axis. And we can't just put this number in. We're going to basically determine how many pixels is equal to how many, uh, let's use degrees in this case. So we can just come up with a number here and adjust it later. We're going to call it camera x sensitivity. And we're going to say for every one pixel, we're going to move just one degree. So we'll multiply the pixels 
by our x sensitivity and it's in degrees now or uh, we're going to assume it's in degrees so we're going to turn it into radians which is what uh, we need for this this function and we're going to see what happens it's probably a bit wonky at first until we do a little bit of debugging it is backwards um, but it does work somewhat so if you're following along or testing this yourself, you'll notice that it does uh, operate in reverse order. So we just need to make that negative. So it's a little uh, clunky in the sense that it's uh, takes a little bit to get to the target. So we'll up the power then. So we still got a little bit of a problem here. Um, if you swing the mouse too much, it sort of uh, reverses itself and goes the opposite direction. So let's take a look at why that is. So I did a little research real quick because for a moment there it had me stumped. Um, I realized that if you put the body gyro in the starter character, it replicates to the server. So what's happening here when we perform a rotation and it like swings back on us is the server is correcting the value uh, authoritatively with what it has versus what the client has. It's a little interesting problem, but to fix that, what we're going to do is we're going to delete this instance here so it doesn't replicate and only create it in our local script here. That way it doesn't replicate to the server and we have sort of a latency-free movement. We're going to recreate the values I had, which was uh, about that should be fine. and then parent it to the root part. And uh, see if we fix that little uh, issue. Yeah, it's a lot smoother now. Okay, perfect. So we've got our, uh, we've got our over the shoulder camera um, and it moves when you move the mouse. That's basically the gist of it. The code again is a, uh, you could organize it a little bit better. Um, just remember not always to worry so much about organization to the point where you start spending hours rather than getting results. Results are the most important part. Um, but when you're thinking of scaling a project, you should also consider in an equal way uh, your organization. Just don't go overboard with it. This is an example of uh, what you can sort of get it to uh, as an over-the-shoulder camera. You can adjust the values in the script, which I'll provide um, a link to it in the description, of course. Um, and good luck on your game.